Hi there, this is something I've wanted to do for an exceptionally long time, is do my own audio commentary for the Doomsday Machine episode of the original Star Trek. I've been watching this show as long as I can remember, and this particular episode is one that I could probably call my all-time favorite. I've seen it so many times, I can recite parts of it without it being on screen. It is just amazingly good to me. It is quintessential original Star Trek. So I decided to sit down and do a commentary for it for its run in my Star Trek marathon. I'm going to use the special edition version that was on the Blu-ray set. So if you want to follow along, you can play with it. I'll give you a trigger to start playing. There will be no commercials and no breaks. I'll just keep going. Um, that's probably about it for intro. I can't think of anything else to say at the moment. I will have comments on the various versions since I know the original super well. Anyway, let's get going. I'm going to start a countdown here. And when I get to zero and press play, you should press play on the start of the episode so we can be in sync. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, play. And it's a star field coming in. This is when I could tell when episodes were happening. I knew what they were just by the opening star field. Whoop. That's not Ahura, their own communications, one of the few episodes she's not in. And I believe that's the first appearance of Kirk's sideways uniform. Here's Sulu. We do not have Chekhov this episode. I've been reading somewhere they would have bits with some characters not there to save money on production costs. Here come some of the first special effects. The original version had much less serious looking rocks. It was not a Nova. How come we never see them charting stuff in this show? It's always disaster they're going after, despite charting being one of their big deals. More rocks. The ship doesn't look like the asteroid ship. Here comes an interesting shot, I believe is the first, when somebody walks in front of the view screen while it is on to the other side of the ship. That was never shown to this point. It's a disaster beacon. How do you raise it? It's not interactive. No, of course they're not. The ship's broken. This is always one of my favorite moments in any Star Trek episode, is seeing another... Constitution class ship. I love seeing other ships. The original version, the ship was basically an actual toy model they bought off the shelf because they didn't have the money to wreck their actual filming model, and it looked like that in places. What were those two guards going to do by stepping forward one step there, except get in the way of that one lieutenant trying to leave the ship bridge? Still love this theme song. Sorry I'm not saying anything, I'm just listening to the theme song because it's still damn cool.
William Shatner, the only one from the big crew who's still with us as I record this in 2024. He's 93, I believe. Well, the main top three guys, I mean. By Norman Spinrad, he did a cool video on YouTube when this enhanced version was released into syndication. I'll have to link that on my page. Palmer, that's the that's character's name. If all power packs are dead, then how do they have any energy for anything? In other words, a cheap way of not having to redress the bridge. Does the Doomsday Machine itself not count as a vessel, I guess? Spock usually puts up more of a fight than that. Oh, Constellation, that, that was a fun joke there, which I'll link below about the special effects people playing a joke on one of their own. And of course, we materialize here. Scotty goes playing with this thing in the wall. Of course it's shorted out. You just shorted it out, Scotty. Hey, these guys don't have red uniforms on. They're not going to die. I love the music in this episode. It's one of the few that got a full score itself, as opposed to just using the same music over and over again. Also, look at these little things in engineering here. The little circular spheres. Those are the eggs from the, the uh, Devil in the Dark episode being repurposed, which I thought was hilarious when I found out. I'm going the wrong way, Scotty. The engines were behind you. I mean, I know this is just redressed stuff from the Enterprise, but I loved seeing this. Just the pretense that we're on another ship was really exciting to me when I was a kid. I loved seeing other bits of the ship. I thought you had no power. This was actually the first time we saw auxiliary control. They had built a new set for this, and it first appeared here. Where, where were they going? Were they going past where Decker was, and then they stopped because they saw him? It's what it looked like to me. Kirk's usual way of trying to get at things. Let's shake it a bit. That's it. More drugs. One of McCoy's favorite things. William Wyndham, as Decker, did a great scene-chewing performance in this episode. One of the best things there is. Despite all the action, his acting, I thought, was great. Shaking, more shaking from Kirk. Oh, 
Also, his insignia on his uniform looks like a pretzel. Yep. I don't know who they who they are. I saw it. I saw it. Loved Wyndham's performance here. I almost hate talking over it, but it was really good. I don't you think I know that? There was, but not anymore. Here comes the talky part of the episode where we set up plot such that it is in this episode. It looks like one of those things you see at the airport on the runway to tell you what way the wind is going. Both? Neither? I don't know. I always was bummed we never actually saw the Doomsday Machine take out a planet, either in the original special effect version or the new one, period. There never was a sequel to this, so there was no opportunity for it, but that was always something I would have liked to have seen. Yeah, here comes the part where they theorize about stuff. Uh-oh, and the threat. Here's the threat. With, with the appropriate music. Later on, many years later, there was a novel written in the Next Generation era that theorized that the Doomsday Machine was created to fight the Borg. The idea being that they would be so overpowering to the Borg that they couldn't compensate for it, period. And that was shown in a novel. Well, it wasn't shown. It was a novel. You had to imagine it. But I remember reading that going, yeah, I could believe that. I also love the end of this scene when Decker basically yells at him for talking too much.
Bet you're going to lose more than that by the end of the episode. Look, there's that little light strip that goes over Shatner's eyes that happens a lot. Always thought that was a thing made up to make him look better as the lead actor. First commercial break, end of act one, we'll get to see the thing. There's the useless security guards again. Is pursuing us. It looks much more blue in this version. Amusing thing the author told about the look of the thing. He apparently wasn't happy about it. And Roddenberry said there was no money to do what they had envisioned. And he called it a uh, sock dipped in cement. And he called the new version, which he was still alive to see, a technologically advanced sock dipped in cement. Yeah, what's that mean? Yes, we know that. Look at Scotty. He's got his, the thing over his shoulder, which will come up later in one of the scenes, which I'll point out. It comes and goes multiple times in the same scene because they're reusing footage from an older episode at some point here. How does this blast from the Doomsday Machine not obliterate them? If the thing can chop up planets with this beam, how does it not like rip through the ship like a knife through butter? In theory, this episode should be over and no more Star Trek at this point. More group throwing ourselves around the stage. Command Spock, Spock. Sit down then. Nope. You're not going with him. You're staying with me. I got to see what's going on. Don't forget to try the 2G6 circuit later. And here comes Decker asserting his authority in a minute. You can see it just from him standing there, even though he's not saying anything. Unless you fire at it. Here we go. Here comes Decker getting all nuts and causing problems. Can... Does Decker look like somebody who's going to care about logic?
I'm always surprised the crew here just did refu didn't just refuse to pay any attention to Decker. Oh, go for it, Spock. Calling out his dead crew. That sounds impressive, but we don't know what neutronium is. Good look from Decker there. And the music's great too. But that's just one of the best parts of this one. Sir. I'll certify that right now. <laughs> Love McCoy in this scene. I'll certify that right now. <laughs> That's an almost human look from Spock there. I love that. Spock. What would he, what would be acceptable? A dance, a little jig there. That's one of my favorite lines because most of the time McCoy's on the bridge. There's no reason for him to be there. So why the hell is? Oh, this music with the spinning chair. This is great stuff when he looks at everybody. Part of that's cut out in the syndicated version. They made it much shorter in the version that has to fit in 40 minutes. It's a good bit. They shouldn't have taken it out. And Spock staring at him is great, too. I always love Decker sitting there like kind of chewing on the memory tape things. I don't think they ever had a real name. More staring from Spock. And it's the Doomsday Machine, which when I was a little boy and I'd watch this over and over, I used to say the Doomsday Machine looked like a pork chop. I don't know why it doesn't look like a frickin' pork chop, but when I was single-digit age, I called it the pork chop. <coughs> Excuse me. This whole scene here seems like the kind that could get cut out. And Scotty pulls out this little gadget thing, which really, th this little bit is like, eh, we're padding a bit with this scene. Although it's a nice prop. It was brand new here, I think. 2G6 circuit. Okay. God, does this music sound so much like Jaws in places? And this came out like eight years before Jaws did. Did they rip off Doomsday Machine music for Jaws? Who knows? <laughs> Ooh, 
Oh, another one on the ship. Three, that's three on the ship now. It should not be intact anymore. Yes, we know that. That should be its own drinking game every time Decker says, I'm in command. I still like the original effect here better with the blue color of the Doomsday Machine. The enhanced one, I mean, it looks great in general, but it doesn't have the same blue feel that the original one did that I liked. And this, on both the original and this version, Kirk comments on what's going on on the screen before it actually appears on the screen. That has always bugged me since the early 70s. I thought they would fix that with the special effects enhanced, but they didn't. I do like that it showed them battling here. But that's just one of those, the original one, they probably didn't have money for the additional effects. just bounced off I'm surprised he didn't point out he was in command there's that line on Kirk's face again trying to make Shatner look good they'll blow apart well, that's what Scotty needed originally, and you kept him to work on the view screen. And then he was just standing there at the end, doing nothing. Way, way to mis mismanage your people, Kirk. Shield's gone. If they hit you again, it should be... Uh, that's four... Five times it's hit the Enterprise with two, two, two with the shields down. How is this ship still alive? Six. Apparently there was something here where they're all looking around. There was supposed to be some sound effect that they were looking at or listening to, excuse me, that didn't make it into the final version of it where I read that. But don't you understand? We've got to destroy it. Hey, what's Spock doing with Ahura's ear thing? And I love this thing. What is Decker doing here? Is he is he sick at the stomach or is he just going to puke over the side of his chair. What's going on? He's not doing anything there. I do like this effect better of it being pulled into the Doomsday Machine than the original version. The original version, the ship was flat the entire effect. This looks a lot better. Here's Kirk getting a little concerned. Great line coming up here about phasers. Oh, I loved this when I was a kid. When I was a little kid, I used to wonder why those pile of memory tapes just spontaneously fell on the floor. It's like, who did that? And watch Scotty here. Look. Uh, Kirk rolls around in the... Look, he's got no thing on his shoulder. Uh, there's Kirk rolling. Look, Scotty's got nothing on his shoulder, and now the next time we see him, that thing's back on his shoulder again. So they're reusing footage from earlier episodes when he didn't have the thing on his shoulder. See, it's back. Keep. This is like the second time, or the first time, Scotty did this, made a ship where it was just him and Kirk moving it, because they did kind of the same thing in the third Star Trek movie with Enterprise A there. Uh, 
Oh, here comes the phaser line. That's a fun line, but it it's, it flies in the face of other continuity, which shows that they don't use money. It's one of the few times that Decker is not insane and used proper tactical at this point. In theory, if you have enough ships, you could just... Li See, this is how I always thought the episode could have ended. They only had two ships here, but they could wait till more showed up. You could have one on one side, distract the Doomsday Machine with a phaser blast. You could have one on another side, distracting it with a phaser blast. And you just keep going back and forth. The ship won't do anything else except react to the phaser blast. So you just keep doing that eventually, it will run out of power and just die on its own. That's the end of the episode right there. And nobody else had to die. Oh, here comes one of my... Favorite lines of the entire episode is coming up soon from Shatner. Drink. 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 <laughs> I love the indignity here of making Spock come down to his station to talk to him. Blast regulations is my favorite line here. I'm not going to talk over it. Oh, drink, by the way. Here comes the long game where we find out what those two useless guards were for in the back. That's not entirely true. Vulcans do bluff, but they call it something else. I always thought that Decker gave up too quickly here, that he didn't fight it once Spock threatened this. Uh, does that count as a drink? Oh, we got a line.
not exactly a amazing dialogue for George Takei in this episode. Oh, here comes the, the fight scene. And what's funny about this is if you watch, look at the floor. There's all kind of scuff marks all over it. They apparently had did this several times before the version that was used in the episode. But they didn't clean the floor. So it's got all of the remnants of the previous takes here. And, of course, that's not William Wyndham there. Uh, that really shouldn't have rendered the guy unconscious. It would hurt, but I always thought that about science fiction. People are rendered unconscious by single punches. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. The shuttlecraft, I loved seeing the shuttlecraft. This was great. When Decker takes off, note the shuttlecraft leaving the ship. He almost crashes into the door, which I thought was great. The original effects didn't show that very much. It didn't show Decker's hurry to get off the ship, but this version did. I thought that was a great idea. An intercept course. Here goes the shuttlecraft. Oh, it's and for once it's not NCC seventeen oh one seven. Don't hit the door, don't hit the door. It was too late before you opened the first word there, Sulu. You should have been more proactive. Why are you launching a shuttle? Always loved the shuttlecraft. Any episode that had it was like a plus for me. It's a stupid thing, but there we are. And here comes the main scene chewing stuff by William Wyndham. Also, in the new special effects version, all three windows of the shuttlecraft have something in them. In the original, it was just the center one. See you later, pretzel boy. He's not going to care about logic, Spock. He didn't before. What makes you think he's going to care now? I also can't remember if that shuttlecraft NCC-17016 has a name. If they did, it went off the screen too fast. Uh-oh. Really? You just spent time before him saying he was not. Not really. You're not. And let's just watch William Wyndham eat up the scenery big time. It's one of the most scenery-chewing performances I've ever seen in anything. He's gone. No shit, Spock. We all saw it.
Don't you have to push buttons for that? Or at least have not Uhura open the channel? That's uh, George Takai's porn viewer there. You always wonder what you saw in there. Never saw a single episode with what was inside that. I have to imagine Takai was looking into actually nothing there. Boy, they love using the lighting to accent Shatner's face. Happens a lot. Even beyond the little stripe thing over his eyes. Oh, this line is so quintessential Spock. When he says, no, not 97.83, whatever it is. The correction is so Spock. <laughs> the irritation in Kirk's face is great. What would happen if the doomsday machine itself ran into the sun? Would it would the sun take it out? Right, in a minute here, Spock calls Kirk Jim. I might be the first time he did that. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. And Kirk starts his habit of blowing up Constitution-class ships. Oh, here's something coming up. In real life, Jimmy Dewan was in the was in the military and lost one of his fingers. He did his best to hide it so you couldn't see it, but in a moment when he goes poof, you can kind of see it for a fraction of a second. Here comes one of my favorite parts where I can start reciting dialogue. It's the main junction circuitry. I'll get it. Can't. Power level's dropping too fast. Speed is of the essence. The Jeffries Tube. Love the Jeffries Tube. I don't know why. It was just a goofy little side set. In the original version with the OG special effects, it's quite clear here that the Constellation was a prop. The, the, the special effects are so primitive there.
in the lead up to the constellation being eaten of, as such. You can see it in the OG version. They've, they've fixed it in this, and it looks great. But some of me misses the old shabby special effects sometimes. Really? What else are they going to do? Just go off and have a coffee or something? Of course the transporter room's going to stand by. Red button. How does Kirk time this properly? I always wondered that. Does he guess? And does he really need to leave it to the absolute last second? I mean, he could have just beamed over like a minute ago and it still would have happened. Whoop! Smoke bomb. Focus. Love that. Spock tries to help Scotty here fix this thing, and I always wondered why Scotty didn't tell him to shut up. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Try inverse fate. Stop setting off the smoke bombs and get Kirk. These special effects are much better than the original here. The timing of the end here with the countdown is always wrong. The timing, it should have been finished long before. Five, four, three, two. That looks like the Eye of Sauron, doesn't it? By the way, the countdown would have been over and it should have blown up already. That's some hella bad indigestion, man. And now that Kirk's been rescued, mentally, to me, the episode ends right there. Everything else that happens, it's like, nah, who cares? But, man, the music in this is so awesome. I know I said it earlier, but it's just makes this episode. If it had different music or the stock music that they've had up to this point, probably wouldn't have been as good. So all hail Saul Kaplan for his soundtrack. Here comes the walking in front of the screen again. Also here, in the new special effects version, the Doomsday Machine could still be on screen there. In the OG version, they walked past the front and it was just a blank star field. Ah, uh, set up for a sequel that never happened. Although if they were to do a sequel to this, you would have probably have to have more than one. And would they just sacrifice a valid starship just to blow it up down the front again? Since they know how to stop it. They would have had to do something completely different with a sequel. But yeah, this episode is great. It's It's no matter how many times I see it, it's still works for me, even though I know everything that happens. Also, got to love this in the new special effect version, in the scenes that they play behind the closing credits, they use OG special effects there. Nobody ever bothered to update the closing titles. I always wondered why. I always figured they would. There he is, Soul Kaplan. But Anyway, if you're still listening to this thing and haven't given up on me by now, I appreciate you listening to it. Let me know what you think. Do you like Doomsday Machine as much as I do? Or is it just 
a fair episode that you don't care for. Maybe you hate it. I don't know. But anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch the episode with me. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye.